Okay, in this video I'm going to be showing how to install a NVMe SSD into your Acer Predator Helios 300 to replace the standard 250 gig SSD that comes with the uh, laptop. The drive that comes with it is plenty fast for most people, but I just wanted to upgrade. I think a lot of people wanted to see if they can upgrade to an NVMe drive. And it is possible, and in this video I'm going to show you how. One of the main things you want to do before installing your NVMe M.2 drive is to clone the one that's already in the system. Uh, it's a 256 gig SSD uh, M.2, but you want to clone that to either a external USB drive or if you follow my other video and installed a second drive in your laptop already, then you basically want to clone it to that drive. And you can just various uh, different programs made for cloning uh, for Windows, but the one I use is Macrim Reflect. So you can come to, to search for Macrim Reflect or go to macrim.com and they have a free home version. So you just click on home use and then save the file and then install it. Now I have a slightly older version here, but it's basically the same thing. And what you want to do is make sure that, or at least that it's seeing your drives you have existing. So this is the one we're going to be cloning, is this first drive. And it shows up as 238 gigabytes usable there. And this is the new drive that I installed, the uh, Samsung. But you want to come up here. You want to go to other tasks and click Create Rescue Media. And go through here and follow the steps. You wanna keep, keep on clicking Next. And you wanna basically uh, select the USB drive, USB thumb drive, and have that in your system. And then you just keep on clicking Next and let do all this. And it'll, it will uh, create the image that'll then put on the USB drive so that you can then boot your system. So just keep on clicking Next. Keep everything at default. Now you want to make sure that your USB drive is formatted FAT32 instead of uh, NTFS. So you can go into your file manager and check that and see if it's uh, NTFS or FAT32, most likely if it's a brand new drive, it's going to be NTFS. You want to go in there, Windows, and format it. And it'll show up here. I already have mine built, but it'll show up here. And you select it and click Finish. And then it'll make turn that USB drive into a bootable drive and it'll run a copy of Macrium Reflect. So in this next part here, I will boot into the laptop with the USB drive and show you how to clone from the old drive to your second drive so that when you install the new NVMe and about two drive, you can then clone it back onto that and you should have a bootable disk. Okay, then once you get the clone done, you wanna make sure your PC is shut off. And then you come in and remove these two panels. There's just one screw on each, one here. This is where your uh, two and a half inch hard drive went. You went over here, this is where your memory is. So you take those screws all out and take off those panels. And then you move all the screws around the edge and in the middle here. It's like, I don't know, like a dozen, 14 screws. Uh, make sure you remove them and don't lose them. And then you can remove the cover. Uh, we'll show you, I did that in a previous video, so I'm not gonna record that all again, but I'll, I'll put that in here and show you uh, to remove that. And then I uh, will come back in and we'll show you how to Remove the old M.2 SSD and put in a new one. Okay, so once you get all the screws out and loosened up, all around the sides and a few in the middle, start prying from the back corner. And it's in there pretty tight, so you're going to have to be careful and pry it gradually, but eventually the back will come off. And 
make sure we don't lose any screws. Okay, so here, have the back off here. I actually have just to the side a little bit because I still have the other hard drive connected. That's fine. Make sure you don't mess up the cable. And here I'm undoing the one little screw that holds the M.2 drive in here. And then there's a little slot, you just pull it out. It's in there very lightly. And you take the new drive, and from an angle, you put it into the same slot that the other drive was in. And it goes in fairly easy. And you want to take the same screw and kind of push down on the drive and put the screw back in. And just make sure you line it up good and don't have it cross threaded, but then screw it in. And you need a tiny screwdriver, but uh, Make sure it's fit in there well. And then basically that's all there is to it. Then you put the back cover back on and make sure that the drive cable is not messed up or anything and that it's still connected correctly. And you put the screws back in and then the drive is installed and we move on from there. Okay, so once we have it all buttoned up back again, hook power up to it, turn it on and hit the F2 key repeatedly so we can get into the BIOS. And make sure that the drive is there and then go down and make sure the boot order is correct so we can boot from the USB drive again. And then we can hit F10 to save and get out of the BIOS. Now it's going to be booting into the USB drive again. So we could go into Macroom Reflect and now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to do a restore from the image that we made to the new uh, SSD. So here we are in Macrium. So we're going to go to Restore, and we want to find the file that we made. So I made it up to the drive here, find the image file, and then we choose the image file. And now we're going to tell the program which partition or which drive to put it onto. So this is the SSD that's already in the system. So we want to choose the unallocated one here. So we chose that as the drive to restore to. And then you click next to confirm your settings to make sure it's going to do everything that you want it to. And then finally you hit finish and that's when it actually starts the restore process. Uh, take about, on well, my system took about 45 minutes or so, so it should take roughly that amount of time. And then you're finished with the restore and we can move on to the next part. Okay, and then restart on my computer and it booted into Windows. And you might have an issue where you might have to do a repair install but it should be able to have no problem and go right into Windows and then you can log in and check to make sure that the PC is up and running. So here it is, it's logged in. So now I'll show you what to do to get the rest of the hard drive to show up in Windows. 
Alright, since you cloned a 250 gig hard drive to, in my case, a 1 terabyte drive, when you go back into Windows, you're only going to see the 250 gigabytes. So you just come to your disk management. And here I am in that. And then you want to go to your unallocated part and right click on that and click, choose simple volume and then just kind of whatever the maximum is take the entire unallocated part and create a new drive and it's going to ask you to sign a drive letter so choose whatever drive letter you want and just choose the next one in line which was E and also choose to do a uh, format on it and then when you click OK it will format the partition or that section of the partition and then you'll have the full size of your drive available which in my case is one terabyte okay now you see that the oh I had a part is now partitioned it's now the E and it shows it down there in Windows 10. So you come into the my computer here and you can see that there's new partition E and it's empty, but it's the full what's left over of the terabyte that wasn't taken up by the 250 gigabytes of the original C drive. Okay now this is a part I did a test when I originally installed the second hard drive, the two and a half inch SSD. Uh, which I have in a previous video of mine that link below but these are the results of Crystal Disk Mark for the original drive plus the new 2.5 inch uh, Samsung 850 Evo so this first test here is the 850 Evo which is my D drive so I'll show you the test here and what the results were and with the read and write in the 4 to 500 megabyte range uh, which is very very fast for a hard drive, uh, it's pretty nice for an SSD, uh, two and a half inch SATA SSD in that five to six hundred megabyte range per second. But here I'll, you'll see the results of that. And then I here I'll show the results of the original C drive, which is the one we just replaced. And it was roughly the same speed because it was also a SATA drive. It wasn't, the original one wasn't an NVMe. So you can see here that it had similar results to the Samsung, which is actually pretty quick. It's quicker than I thought it would be. But then I'll show you the results next of the new drive, and there is quite a difference. Okay, here it is with the new drive installed, which is the, in mine, it's the C and E drives. That's the new, uh, Western Digital Black one terabyte NVMe drive. So here I have Crystal Disk Mark, and I have it set to test one of the partitions here of the new drive. So I'll click the All Test here, and that will test the read and write in various Q depths and also uh, sequential versus uh, random reads and writes. So I will show the testing of the other drive as well. We can see these numbers of the new drive are two to six times faster than the other SSD. And here's the Samsung 850 Evo. So I had to test it again to see if it slowed down any, and its numbers are a little bit slower than when I originally installed it. So it has gotten some slowdown over the last six months or so. So here you'll be able to see the performance of the new drive with the older drive and see the quite, there's quite a bit of difference uh, in the performance of the new drive. Now it's not as noticeable maybe in day-to-day -day work, but in certain workloads that really hit the hard drive you will see a noticeable difference. But at least in the synthetic bit at least in the synthetic benchmark here, you see that there's a huge difference in speeds and it does just by feel in certain applications it seems quite a bit faster. So hopefully you found this video useful and was able to help you install a new NVMe drive into your 
Predator Helios 300. Does seem like a worthwhile upgrade. I was able to get the one terabyte drive, so that added about 700 gigabytes to my system storage, which is very helpful. But now I have like close to one and a half terabytes free. So hopefully this video was useful for you. And if you do decide to get an NVMe drive to update your system, I hope you consider using one of my affiliate links in the comments below. If you buy from Amazon using my affiliate link, I get a few bucks and that will help me create more videos like this and try to help more people. But I hope I was able to help you and thank you for watching.